Mark at eight. Over the line, mark at zero, dude. This isn't numb. There are rules. But it wasn't over the line. Mark at eight, dude. Smokey, you're entering a world of pain. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Rugged Adventures. Super happy to have you guys here. My friend Dan here, if you can read that on the ball, he must have gotten tired of his Black Beauty bowling ball. And what he did was he dropped it off at the local St. Vincent de Paul. And while I was perusing the, uh, the, the selection there to get something, I noticed this bowling ball and I thought, hmm, I bet that would make a fabulous target. So today we're going to see what happens when a bullet hits a bowling ball. And what we've got for you today, we've got the typical stuff, the 556 five, 300 blackout, which probably has the coolest name out of all of the ammo that we're going to shoot today. We've got the 6.5 Creedmoor, but then we also have the uh, 22 long rifle pistol. We got the standard little uh, nine milli pistol. I also have a 380. This is Smith & Wesson EZ. We've done a video on that. And then of course the 40 cal Glockosaurus. So let me get down range, set these bowling balls up, and we're going to see what happens when you go after the bowling ball instead of the bowling ball going after the pin. First up, 22 long rifle out of the Ruger Mark IV. I think the 22 gets kind of a bad rap because it's not terribly powerful, but man is it fun and cheap to shoot. So let's see how this does. Did I even hit it? Let's try again. Ah, let's go down and take a look. I'm not sure if I hit it. So I did hit it twice. Hit it once there and I hit it once there. I think that's the first one. I think that is the second one. Not a lot of damage done with that. So let's do something that I didn't tell you guys about. Let's shoot it with the 22 out of a rifle because 22 out of a rifle actually has significantly more velocity than 22 out of a pistol. So let me go grab that. All right, so I went and fetched the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. This will actually shoot these quite a bit faster than the pistol. The pistol actually shoots regular bullets subsonic. This will go supersonic. And I got the GoPro much closer, so hopefully we can get some better shots and hopefully I don't shoot the GoPro. Let's give it a whirl. Well, we didn't do much on that one either. Right here, I think these three, one there, one there, and one there, are from the rifle. And it sort of smells like rubber. There's maybe a millimeter or so taken out of them. So we'll go up and get the 380 and see if that does any more damage. So we'll give this Smith & Wesson uh, M&P Shield EZ a try. This is in 380. We'll see if that does any more than those little 22s did. I know we hit it a couple times. Let's go take a look. It looks like it's this one and this one right here from our 380. And not a ton difference from the 22s from either the pistol or the rifle. I was really expecting to get at least a little bit more damage from that 380. So naturally, let's move up to the longer version of 380, the 9mm, and see if that does anything. 9mm from this SIG P365. This is kind of a cool handgun because it's really small. I mean, look at it uh, compared to the size of my hand. And it holds uh, 10 plus 1 in the chamber, so it's a ton of uh, bullets for a gun this size. Let's see what it does to our bowling ball. I put a fresh face up on the, the ball. I twisted it around so that we have uh, a fresh face to hit at. We'll see if this nine does anything more than the other two. And it bit back on me on that one. <clears throat> hit me with a little piece of this. So we might be scooting back more, but good reason to use the eye protection. So the 9mm definitely put a hurting on it here. It, these are just standard 9mm rounds. There's nothing fancy about them. There's, uh, you know, they're just standard ball ammo. Um, again, nothing fancy. It looks like we hit it here and then we hit it dead center there. You can see that little ridge thing going on. I don't know where the other hit was. It may have both hit in this area and that is why it popped out this this section here where you know just had constant fatigue from getting hit so that actually did quite a bit more i don't know if any one bullet did anything or just the combination of them but we will move up to the 40 caliber i'll put a fresh face up on the ball again we'll see what that does and then after that we'll get into the rifles last up for the pistols is the glockosaurus 40 cal it's a glock 23 this round also kind of gets a lot of hate because it's not a real 10 millimeter but 
I like it, and I don't really care what anyone else has to say about it. Same distance because, well, what the heck. And I got hit again by a piece of the ball, and now it's running away. So definitely going to back up for the next ones, and we'll see what that looked like on the uh, GoPro. Here is the, the front, the side of this where we hit. It looks like that one that caused that piece of shrapnel to fly off hit right here. I don't know where the other hit was. I can't imagine that I hit two in exactly this area, but I don't see any other hits. I think this one was from when we were shooting 22s at it, but this is the piece that flew back and hit me in the leg. It looks like it's knocking off the shell of this and then whatever's inside is still staying intact. That ricochet got me pretty good. Uh, it hit me in the leg right on the front of the um, of the bone there and uh, got a little bleeding going on, which you can't show on YouTube or else it gets taken down. Not terrible, but we are definitely gonna back up for these next few ones because like I usually say, safety third, and we've been hit one, two times, so third time, now it's time to back up. We're back in our traditional shooting area, our little overlook that it has our range and such on it and i've got the anderson arms ar-15 with the uh, hybrid 46 suppressor on there could because why because it's cool that's why uh so we're going to shoot this and see what it does with 556 these are all going to be supersonic rounds but like i said suppressor because it's awesome here we go And it rolled really far away while I was doing that. I might have to go chase it down, but I, I hit it a bunch of times on the move. And uh, I don't know, it didn't look like it broke too much. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm highly impressed with this thing. We put a ton of chunks in it, but it didn't really do like all that much. I thought that there would be a, a failure of the ball, like it split or something, but this may be an exit wound but all the rest of them i think are just the uh, where the bullet hit like here's here's one of the uh, the bullets from you know the 556 five, and i can't get it out of there with my finger but i for sure thought that these would go through i'm not exactly sure what kind of construction this ball is but it's uh, pretty darn good really other than just a bunch of hits Nothing spectacular happened to it, which is highly surprising. Let's move up to the 300 blackout, see if that does anything. Then we'll use the 6.5 Creedmoor on it. Hopefully one of these splits this thing in two. 300 blackout out of this Palmetto State Armory, uh, 300 blackout. This is now a short barrel rifle. We went through all of the paperwork necessary, the Form 1 to get this converted from a pistol to a short barrel rifle. So it's official now. And again, the hybrid 46 suppressor on there. There's nothing that looks better with a suppressor than a short barrel rifle. They're just made to go together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Let's uh, see what this does. Big thing to worry about when you're using 5.56 and 300 blackout together is make sure you know which cartridge is going into which gun because if you get a 300 blackout into a 5.56 gun, you're gonna have a bad time. I think I got four hits on that thing. We will see. So I'll tell you guys, this ball is impressive. I don't know what it's made out of. We definitely hit it here. Um, I'm not exactly sure where else we hit it because it's kind of getting beat up at this point. So I don't know. But it looks like the 300 blackout took out a big chunk right there. We'll put this up like this for the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor so that we have a nice clean face to hit it on. And the funny thing is, as you go down here, you can see there's just a trail of debris from hitting it, yeah, you know, successive times. So that's pretty cool. I really haven't shot very many moving targets. So that's been kind of an interesting, uh, different thing to do. Let's load up that 6.5 Creedmoor and see what happens. I have three bullets in here. I will give it, um, see if I can get, two hits on it if it starts rolling i don't know never really tried that with a bolt action with the target on the move we'll see what happens here we go i don't 
know if that hit or not. But man, I hope it did. This thing is pretty much indestructible at this point. I'm sure that I hit it once because I didn't hit anything else around here. And I'm pretty sure that I hit it twice. I think that this is the second shot. That in there is our uh, 6.5 bullet. It was a, it's a soft nose bullet, so it uh, expanded quite a bit. I don't, we have to go back to the tape to see exactly where I hit the first time. I would love to be able to shoot this thing with a 50 cal and just blow it to bits. And if you guys subscribe to this channel and you know like and watch the videos, Hopefully we can get that sort of revenue coming in where we can get a nice 50 cal BMG to finish off all of our targets with pretty much certainty. But I have one more thing before we go. This is just one type of bowling ball. I think it's an older type. It's got this corked inside. I have another one. If you guys can see it up there, it's a little purple one. And it just feels different. I'm gonna put three rifle rounds through it. We'll do the 5.56, 300 blackout, the 6.5 Creed more, and we'll see if that's any different than this one. So I don't know exactly what's different about this ball, but it just feels denser. Like the core feels like it's more solid. So we're gonna just shoot this three times, just right in a row, and then go take a look at it. Got a little excited. Let's look. And so yeah, this one here definitely has a different composition inside. This is like some sort of, I don't know, hard something or other, I don't know what it is, surrounded by that same sort of plastic stuff that flies back and hits you in the leg. This is the other side. I think we put a couple hits in here before it started moving. You can see this one kind of went in the side like that. That might've been that 300 blackout that I thought that I missed on and just nicked the side. But uh, this one, we're gonna hang on to this one for a while in case we do end up getting that, uh, that five or that uh, 50 cal BMG. Guys, if you like this, be sure to give this a big thumbs up. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to, to subscribe. Subscribe a thon still going on. Uh, there's all sorts of hungry guns around the world that need to be fed with bullets, including right here on this privately owned range. I appreciate you guys watching today, and I'll see you on the next one.